oneness and duality. Humankind has not woven the web of life. We are but one thread within it. Whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together, all things connect. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. There is a field of energy that underlines everything that happens in our world. There is nothing that can happen in our world of the, or the universe as far as science is concerned that is not contained within that field. Let's keep in mind that these new old models to explain our world today can still only be maps of reality and shall not be confused with experiencing reality itself. Having said that, the implications of an underlying unifying field connecting everything in existence is drama are dramatically challenging everything that our limited left brain mainstream science has violently advocated for many centuries. Cutting edge science continues to come into full circle with a mystic wisdom that stretches over cultures and aeons into the present time, claiming a greater reality behind the movie screen we perceive to be reality, claiming a fundamental unity of all living beings. In the so-called developed Western world, we have been long afraid to acknowledge that our compulsive cynicism and the ridiculization of fundamentalist religion has yet just been another extension of the separation logic that has disconnected us from the rest of everything else that exists. Arrogance, some may call it. I would prefer to label it fear and clinging to an outdated fundamentalist materialism, which is literally framing our realities and preventing us to look at the mountains of evidence that are being compiled in laboratories and research projects all over the globe while you are listening to that. Telepathy, out of body experiences, reincarnation, remote viewing, channeling, time travel, spontaneous healing, near death experiences, all phenomena that cutting edge physics can account for. Even though it's been pointed out that the most successful of all theories becomes more mysterious the deeper one dives into its mysteries. The idea that we are separate from one another and ultimately alone, that our own existence is eternally fragmented, is a mirror of our dom dominant cosmology, that planet Earth is somehow hoovering in lonesome superiority through a solar system that is as unpopulated as we are in our envisioned, disconnected ego bubble. This way of thinking seems to be so much entangled with the ways of our contemporary culture that it is difficult to imagine if we can ever manage without the stranglehold of our omnipresent dualistic little equations that are tearing our minds and hearts apart. Our experience of being separated from everything else is certainly providing us with an opportunity to unfold and develop our uniqueness. As long as we keep remembering that this experience is temporary, as long as contextual, eventually even the most beautiful of all raindrops finally has to return to the infinite oceans. The illusion of separation fueling all me against you and us against them agendas is the base phenomena for all warmongering. Let's bear in mind that George W. Bush is part of the unified field too, even though he might be at the forefront of those who have fallen into the abyss of total amnesia. He's certainly serving his purpose as a powerful catalyst for global change, being such a prominent reflector of our collective irresponsibilities. Our compulsive flirtation with apparently exclusive polarities creates a split that hits every aspect of our lives, including our own interiors, our fragmented souls and the parts of us that we keep bashing into the world of shadow. Our fundamental belief in separation stretches across the world at large, creating hierarchies, unbridgeable gaps between nations, class, gender, race. It divides you and me. This specific type of separation logic has been the primary cause of conflict in the history of planet Earth. 
he doesn't understand that you and me are in fact only different expressions of the same ever-expanding, all-encompassing consciousness, experiencing itself subjectively through us as individual focal points. Everything is conscious, because everything is on one level created and sustained from source energy. Nothing can ever be outside of creation. Creation itself is ongoing and every fiber of us is sustained by measurable interactive creative force fields. Everything is alive, vibrating at different frequencies. This in itself creates the possibility of multiple, possibly infinite, coexisting realities and is standing in sharp contrast to a world that was accustomed to listening to the tunes of one radio station only. And who or whatever controls the tunes of our monolithic and century diet is somewhat meaningless. Because the idea of an off-planet distant God watching our every move as portrayed through mainstream religion is as disempowering as the idea that our essence boils down to a conglomerate of atoms randomly arranged by chance and driven by competitive evolutionary strategies. Interestingly enough, both concepts are lending themselves easily as societal programs of effective population control. Eckhart Tolle makes an interesting point in his book A New Earth, where he proposes that the ego's attachment to external identity-creating resources and mental concepts is a reflection of an underlying disconnection from source energy, from life, from creation itself. This is a tendency that can be predominantly observed in the male species with their underdeveloped emotional bodies, leading to perversions of masculinity and an overemphasis on control and domination. Isn't it in fact cooperation that is the predominant principle of organizing life on this planet? And it seems merely through a desire to rationalize our hierarchical worlds via a ruthless capitalist market as one of its primary arms of worldly executions that the Darwinian model of evolution has received so much attention. The physicist Dr. Mengia Samantha Lawson describes how our horizons of perception are quite literally forcing a division of matter and antimatter down to the worlds of our very bodies, their corresponding auras and subtle energy fields. A beautiful dance between the two forces of creation, commonly referred to as the divine feminine and the divine masculine, longing to come back together and synthesize new old ways of being. Deep planetary healing can take place if humanity can start integrating the perennial wisdom of the ages that all living beings are finite forms, materializations of the infinite universal energy, and when they die they become pure energy once again. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.